I haven't moved. Just because I didn't leave the Labour Party to join another party. I left the Labour Party to shine a spotlight on the disgrace it's become under his leadership, under his leadership, and because I regard myself as proper, decent, traditional Labour, not like the extremists who've taken over this party and are dragging it into the mud. And that's the point I'm going to make in this debate. And I want to say this. These are people, the leader of the opposition, the shadow chancellor, these are people who've spent their entire time in politics, working with, defending all sorts of extremists, and in some cases, terrorists and anti-Semites. Remember what these people said about the IRA. It might be ancient history to the Labour Party's new young recruits, but many people will never forget how they supported terrorists responsible for horrific carnage in a brutal civil war that saw people blown up in pubs, hotels and shopping centres. A few weeks after the IRA blew up a hotel in Brighton, murdered five people at the Tory party conference, the leader of the opposition invited two suspected IRA terrorists to Parliament. When the man responsible for, for, for planting that bomb was put on trial, he protested outside the court. The Shadow Chancellor said that, quote, those people involved in the arms struggle, people he said had used, quote, bombs and bullets, should be honoured. And they had the brass neck to lecture anybody about the rule of law. What a disgrace. Let me tell you this. That I will always profit by the honourable gentleman's counsel, isn't it? But for now, he's all right. This is, a, this is a debate about whether politicians can be trusted to obey the rule of law. And there's not a single Labour figure in the past, not a single one, who would have backed to violence. And he called for, quote, insurrection to bring down the government. They picked the SHIT out of the Conservative Party's offices. Or talked, well, she might not want to hear it, but I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I've, well, I'm not going to I've explained. I've explained why I'm not going over there. But I'll tell you this. Well, I'll tell, well I'm here. I'm here because my vote, because voters in Birmingham sent me here to represent them. Well, and my views, and my views, and the things I stand up for, decency in politics, the rule of law, none of these things have changed, and everybody in Dudley knew exactly what I thought of these people at the last election. And I'll tell you this, and I'll tell the lady this, I'm going to make absolutely certain that she's going to have to answer to her voters for these points at the next election. All right? Well, we'll see. Now, yeah, don't worry about that. And no other, other senior figure in the Labour Party's history, no other senior figure in the Labour Party's history would have joked, would have joked about lynching a female member of Parliament. They don't believe in the rule of law abroad either, Mr Speaker. They always back the wrong side, whether it's the IRA or Hamas and Hezbollah, who they describe as friends. No previous Labour leader would have supported brutal totalitarian dictatorships like the ones in Cuba or Venezuela that have absolutely no regard whatsoever for the rule of law. And no previous Labour leadership would have allowed a party with a proud history of fighting racial critics to have been poisoned by racism, which is what's happened under these people. Racism against Jewish people to the extent that members have been arrested on suspicion of racial hatred, that the party itself has become the first in history to be investigated under equalities laws by the Equalities and Human Rights Commission. These people and the people around them are a million miles away from the traditional, mainstream, decent politics of the Labour Party. They have poisoned what was once a great party with extremism. They cannot be trusted with the institutions that underpin our democracy. They are completely unfit to lead the Labour Party let alone our country.